You smell that? That smells like section 6-4, properties of special parallelograms. Okay. We know parallelograms for the past few sections means parallelogram means that the opposite sides are parallel, they're also congruent, the opposite angles are congruent, and the consecutive sides add up to 180 degrees and the diagonals bisect each other, maybe? I don't know. I ain't taught it in like six years. All right, but what we are going to talk about this section is properties of special parallelograms. Now, we all know the word special means more important than the rest. Now, that's pretty much what it means here, too. When we talk about three shapes, you've probably heard of them before, at least two of them, I know. We got a rectangle. All right, we've got a rhombus. And then we got a mystery. <coughs> All right, that'll work for Harry Potter. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a mystery I'm gonna tell you at the end. You'll never get to know. Can you even see that? Sure, why not? Okay, first thing we're gonna talk about is a rectangle. Rectangle, most of y'all know what a rectangle looks like. A rectangle is a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Uh, diagonals bisect each other, and blah blah yada yada yada. Now, here are the two things that separate a rectangle from everything else. This is what makes it special. It's got right angles. Every single angle in there is a right angle. Okay, it's all right angles. All right, that's why uh, your piece of paper is a rectangle. All those corners are perfect, perfect 90 degree angles. Okay, so it's got 90 degree angles all in there. 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, 360. Okay, just like a quadrilateral will always have. Also, the diagonals. So the first thing about rectangles, you need to write down, let's say uh, all 90 degree angles. Second thing, we already know since it's a parallelogram, these diagonals are going to bisect each other. Also, what they're going to do is, or what they're going to do is, that doesn't make sense. Also, the diagonals are congruent. So not only do they cut each other in half, but they're the exact same size. Like if this diagonal is 8, this diagonal is 8, okay? Now, we know they bisect each other, like automatically, which usually means these two are congruent, these two are congruent. Now, if you cut 8 in half, you got 4 and 4, correct? Well, if the other one's 8, what do you have? 4 and 4. So, all those sections are going to be the same, okay? Does that make sense? Sure it does, because I said it correctly. All right, so that's the two main things about rectangles. If you catch all of it, go back, okay? Now, well, let me sum up rectangles real quick. I'll sum it up later. You don't have to tell me what to do. All right, so next, we're talking about a rhombus. A rhombus, that's how you have to say it if you're in the South. All right, with still a parallelogram, so all the stuff for parallelograms still apply. Opposite sides are parallel. Uh, opposite sides are congruent, uh, opposite angles are congruent, all that jazz, all right? Now here's the thing that makes a rhombus special. Number one, all the sides are the exact same measure, okay? It doesn't always have to be shaped like a diamond, okay? All the sides are the same. If this is seven, this is seven. This is seven, this is seven. All sides congruent, okay? Now, second thing. The diagonals, when they cross, they always make a 90 degree angle. They're always perpendicular. So if we're doing this on a coordinate plane or on a graph and we need to find out if this is a rhombus, those diagonals, perpendicular. Okay, slopes would be switch the sign, switch the line. So right now, so far, we know that all sides are congruent to rhombus and the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay? Last thing. Last thing, in a rhombus, the diagonals are angle bisectors. Now, since it's a parallelogram, we already know these two angles are congruent and these two angles are congruent. So if those two are angle bisected, so are these. And then these two are congruent, so we know that each angle and all four of these are going to be the same as well. Okay? Does that make sense? Good deal, Lucille. Let me write that down. Not what I just said, but what I'm about to say. What I just said. All right, so let's say diagonals are angle bisectors. 
All right, if I went too fast, go back, but that's the three things. Rhombus, all the sides are congruent. Diagonals are perpendicular to each other. These are all 90 degrees in here, 90, 90, 90, 90. And it cuts those angles in half. And since the angles are already congruent, we really only got two different angle measures around the outside. Three total, 90, and then we've got whatever one of these is, all four of those are, whatever one of these is, all four of those are. Okay, so good deal. Now the last one, you're in for a treat, people. We're about to talk to the Sultan of Swat when it comes to quadrilaterals. Four sided figures. You've got a rectangle, you've got a rhombus. When their powers combine and lightning strikes and it looks like Mickey Mouse, you get a square. All day, every day, people. Square is like the ultimate quadrilateral, okay? It's like the Captain Planet of quadrilaterals. When all the quadrilaterals combine with all their special, special, lovely things, they form square. Cage match. All right? Now, squares are easy. I guess not easy, but the thing about squares is all the stuff I said for rectangles and parallel or in uh, rhombuses, how they're 90 degrees, how their diagonals bisect, how the diagonals are 90 degrees, how they, all that junk I said, all of it applies to a square. It's nothing new, it's just everything combined, okay? It means that all these angles are 90 degrees, like a rectangle. All the sides are congruent, like a rhombus. Um, angle bisector, it cuts these things in half, so all those are the same. Uh, these are all 90 degrees in here. Um, and what else do you want me to say? It's a beautiful thing, people. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, other than that, you're probably going to need to use a coordinate plane for most of this because a lot of it they'll put it on the coordinate plane and then you have to go back and say, oh, you find out. Like you do the distance formula to find if they're congruent. They'll do slope thing if, the, you know, if they're parallel, perpendicular. Remember, it switches the sign, switch the line. Uh, that's pretty much it. Distance formula, perpendicular, midpoint, and blankets. This isn't the remote to this camera.